the topic of chromosome abnormalities and the effects these have on the phenotype of a person, in other words, the effect it has on the physical appearance and how the body functions, is one that I like to introduce when we talk about cell division, in particular meiosis, because that is exactly when errors that uh, result in abnormal numbers of chromosomes in sex cells or chromosomes that have an unusual shape or duplicated or missing parts, uh, all of these kinds of accidents are related to the process of meiosis. And so let us distinguish when we talk about chromosomes that uh, there are two types of chromosomes in your cells. These chromosomes that are numbered one through 22 are going to be known as the autosomes because they contain genes that result in the development of all of our body features and also are responsible for producing the proteins that regulate how our organs and tissues function. Remember also that the last uh, two chromosomes you see uh, in this illustration, for example, you see two X chromosomes. Those are going to be known as the sex chromosomes and sex chromosomes are the ones that carry the genes that are responsible for uh, regulating the development of the sexual characteristics in a person. But let us focus first on accidents uh, in terms of abnormal chromosome numbers when we're dealing with autosomes. I insist this is going to be chromosomes uh, pairs one all the way through 22. And so what can we expect to see if a mistake happens here? Take, for example, the case of trisomy 21. In the case of trisomy 21, a person, instead of inheriting the normal set of two chromosome 21, uh, they actually end up with three chromosome 21. And so that is the reason this condition is known as the trisomy is because there are three autosomes uh, number 21. You may be familiar with some of the uh, characteristics of a person with Down syndrome or trisomy 21. Often textbooks will include features like uh, having a round face, a flattened nose bridge, short limbs, loose joints, heart defects, usually with the valves and how they operate, uh, and uh, susceptibility to respiratory infections, uh, even uh, susceptibility to leukemia, and uh, developmental delays that can be experienced. <clears throat> One of the things that sometimes is left out though with regards to people with Down syndrome is that they're also very social and very affectionate. And I am for one, uh, one of the science teachers that would tell you that life has a tremendous amount of value and the person with Down syndrome uh, is sometimes the most remarkable person in terms of the obstacles and the hurdles they have to overcome in life. And uh, in my opinion, they're just remarkable people. Uh, they're very affectionate, they can be very respectful, and they derive a lot of enjoyment participating in social activities. So let us not forget that there is also all of these uh, wonderful characteristics and traits that are typically seen in a person with Down syndrome. And um, so how does that happen? I guess that is the next question we need to address. Uh, abnormal numbers of chromosomes are going to be the result of an accident known as non known as non-disjunction. Non-disjunction means that something is failing to separate. And so what exactly is failing to separate? Remember that in anaphase one of meiosis one, that is exactly when pairs of chromosomes should be separated. So if you look at the illustration I have on the bottom left of this slide, you will see that uh, there are two homologous chromosomes, they're forming a tetrad, and they are not separating, they are not splitting. So here we have the non-disjunction. Both of these are being pulled over to the cell that will be forming on the left side of this illustration. Uh, here we have another pair of homologous chromosomes, but these have successfully separated. And so they are traveling now to opposite sides of the cell. So now let's follow what happens to the cell that would end up receiving uh, an extra chromosome. That cell from this point on is going to have uh, one extra chromosome, and the other cell that is going to be the result of just receiving one of the chromosomes is going to be missing one chromosome. And as meiosis continues, in this case, half of the cells produced by meiosis are going to have a, an extra chromosome, and half the cells made in meiosis are going to be missing one chromosome. 
in addition to non-disjunction in meiosis one, non-disjunction can also happen in meiosis two when anaphase two should be splitting the sister chromatid. So here we see that meiosis one has proceeded as expected, nothing unusual. The homologous chromosomes have been separated and they are moving in opposite direction. When we arrive at meiosis two, this should be when sister chromatids should be separating. They will have one chromosome and the two sister chromatids that are traveling in opposite directions. That is fine. But look at what is happening to this other duplicated chromosome. It still consists of two sister chromatids and they are not splitting. The two are traveling over to one cell. And what would happen here is that in the end, there's going to be one in four cells that will result with an extra chromosome one in four cells at the end of meiosis will be missing one chromosome, although there's going to be half of the cells that are still going to be having the normal number of chromosomes. So this is going to be one of the uh, causes for abnormal numbers of chromosomes and is known as non-disjunction. Uh, we can also, this, there is another factor that plays into uh, abnormal numbers of chromosomes and that is going to be the age of both of the parents. Often we focus on the health of the woman as she gets older, and uh, it is recommended that a woman should not be having children past the age of uh, 35, 40 for sure, uh, although that is also changing in our society these days. Uh, and, uh, but also the age of the man contributes. And so as both the man and the woman get older, uh, there's going to be errors that are going to be accumulating and then uh, oocytes or spermatocytes, these are going to be the germ cells that are going to be leading through uh, meiosis to the production of sex cells that are going to be participating in uh, sexual reproduction. So as you can see on this graph, on one axis we have the age of the mother, and so you can see the age of the woman's age progresses. Uh, we move in this direction of the graph, and then we can see over here the infants that are born with Down syndrome and you can see that something happens, statistically speaking, past the age of 35. And after the age of 35, a woman's chances of having a child with Down syndrome will be increasing at an uh, ever faster and faster rate as the uh, woman gets older. But remember what I'm saying here is that it's not only the age of the mother that plays a role, it is also the age of the father. Uh, so with regards to Chromosome abnormalities that result from abnormal numbers of autosomes. Uh, there's going to be a number of other trisomies that you can also find if you read further on the web. Uh, what we know for sure is that these kinds of abnormalities, for the most part, are going to be resulting in miscarriage. In other words, uh, it is very difficult for a person to develop with extra autosomes or missing autosomes. And I insist here. We are talking about chromosomes one through 22, but we have a few exceptions. And one of those exceptions will be people with Down syndrome uh, who can live um, well into their uh, 40s and 50s. And now these days with advances we have in medicine like surgery that is able, capable of repairing heart valves that are malfunctioning on a newborn and those can be repaired and the person can live relatively a healthy life. Now, uh, things are going to be a little bit different when we go into abnormal numbers of sex chromosomes. While an abnormal number of autosomes, remember we're talking about chromosomes 1 through 22, usually result in a miscarriage. It's a real serious type of a, a chromosome error. Abnormal numbers of sex chromosomes seem to be a little more forgiving in terms of the effects these have on the phenotype of a person and uh, take a look at some of the examples that are typically found in the genetic section of a biology textbook. One of those is going to be known as Pilner syndrome. In this situation, a person is born with only one X sex chromosome. Uh, the O here designates that there's no second X chromosome, which will result in the production of a female with normal phenotypic, uh, phenotypical characteristics. Uh, there's no Y, of course, otherwise this would be a boy. So just one X chromosome. There's a second sex chromosome that is missing. And uh, so the gender of this person is going to be uh, female, and it is expected in terms of uh, ratios 
that about one in 5,000 girls born in the U.S. are going to have uh, this chromosome arrangement where only one X chromosome is found and the second sex chromosome is missing. One in 5,000 girls are going to have this. Uh, some of the characteristics that you will notice on a, a person with Down, I'm sorry, with Turner syndrome is that they're going to be shorter than the average. Uh, there is sometimes a wave of skin that forms between the neck and the shoulders. The most serious phenotypical uh, effect on the body of uh, a woman with Turner syndrome is that her ovaries are not going to be developing properly. They are not producing high, the levels of estrogen that are necessary for the development of secondary sexual characteristics. And because of these underdeveloped ovaries, uh, women with um, Turner syndrome are going to be sterile. They will not be able to have children. When girls are diagnosed early on with uh, something like Turner syndrome, they can be given hormone therapy that will help them develop the secondary sexual characteristics that will make them look like um, an average girl. Uh, and so this is something that doctors can do. However, the problem of infertility or sterility is one that cannot be fixed uh, even with uh, hormone therapy. Another case we have uh, with um, uh, abnormal numbers of sex chromosomes is a male female. Uh, this is when a person is born with three X chromosomes. Uh, remember that a woman should have two of these. Uh, but in this case, there are three, sex, uh, three X chromosomes. And this is going to be a female. It is estimated that about one in 1,000 women born in the U.S. have this extra X chromosome. And there doesn't seem to be really much of a serious effect or consequence on the phenotype, on the physical appearance of uh, this type of woman. Uh, there is going to be uh, sometimes cases where there is limited fertility. Uh, having the extra X chromosome means that sometimes uh, there are going to be some hormonal imbalances that, that interfere, especially with the process of ovulation. And that's where the limited fertility comes into play. Uh, sometimes uh, women with the three X chromosomes are also taller than average, but for the most part, uh, you will not be able to know uh, just from looking at a woman on the outside that they may have this extra X chromosome. They live relatively, uh, I shouldn't say relatively, they live healthy lives and uh, they have no major uh, consequences on, in terms of their health. Uh, there is another situation where a male uh, can live a normal life and have absolutely no consequences on uh, his phenotype if they have an extra Y chromosome. And so remember that the assortment of sex chromosomes in men is going to be X and Y. But sometimes uh, boys are born with an extra Y chromosome. The frequency here in the U.S. is about one in 2,000 births, you know, boy births, that are going to have this uh, extra Y chromosome. Uh, again, like in the case of the male female, uh, boys with the extra Y chromosome are going to have a normal appearance. They are taller sometimes than the average. And this has to do with uh, uh, higher levels of testosterone during puberty. Testosterone is also the hormone that stimulates an increase in uh, muscle and uh, bone development. Uh, but again, looking at a person that has the XYY chromosome arrangement, uh, you will never know from looking at them on the outside that there's something unusual inside in their cells. Uh, there is one more case that I wanted to mention it is Kleinfelter syndrome. And this Kleinfelter syndrome is going to be when a um, boy, this is going to be a male, has sometimes an extra X chromosome. So remember, men should have one X, one Y, but here there is an additional X chromosome. And there are some rare situations, but these have been documented where a boy sometimes may have even two extra X chromosomes. And uh, so there's three X chromosomes and a Y. It is estimated that about one in 2,000 births, uh, boy births in the US, are going to show this chromosome arrangement result in the Kleinfelter syndrome. Uh, as a consequence of these extra X chromosomes and uh, unusually higher levels of uh, estrogen during the development of sexual characteristics, some boys may experience uh, sometimes even the development of secondary sexual characteristics that are typical of a girl. Uh, but in terms of uh, 
behaviors and uh, the anatomy of this person. This is going to be a, a, a boy, a man. The testes don't develop as well. And they are going to end up uh, being incapable of having children because of sterility. The testes will not be capable of producing functioning uh, sperm cells. Uh, again, uh, hormone therapy is something that uh, can be given to boys if this is detected, but in most cases, you will never know from looking on the outside that a boy has this Klein-Felter syndrome. Uh, sometimes what you may see is that um, there are going to be experiment, uh, developmental delays uh, in uh, boys that have the two extra X chromosomes. And so some of the patterns that we're noticing over here is that uh, having extra chromosomes, uh, sex chromosomes, uh, will lead sometimes to sterility uh, problems with uh, uh, being able to have children. And in some cases, it is also going to be leading on uh, developmental delays in cognitive and physical, um, in the physical development of uh, humans. The other type of abnormality we can see as a result of meiosis is going to be abnormal chromosome structures, and these are a little more self-explanatory. Uh, deletion is going to be when a portion of a chromosome is lost. This usually happens when crossing over doesn't produce an even exchange between homologous chromosomes. It could be that one chromosome takes an extra piece, but another one doesn't receive anything in return, and so not getting anything in return is going to result in a deletion. So sometimes a duplication of genetic material can happen. Well, the chromosome that ended up taking uh, a portion of a chromatid from a sister chromatid, but it didn't give anything in return, now it's going to end up with a duplicated section. And the problem with this is that it can lead to some forms of cancer. If the genes that are duplicated are genes that are responsible for production of proteins that regulate the cell cycle, like those cycling uh, and cycling dependent kinases type of proteins. Sometimes there can be also an inversion. It could be that when a portion of chromatid reattaches to the sister chromatid, they reattach in a flipped orientation. So here we see first purple, then green. Uh, but in the case of an inversion, the genes that are in the green section are going to appear first, and then it's going to be the purple. Uh, usually these inversions do not produce any serious consequences because when you look at the genetic material, it's all here. Nothing is added, nothing is extra, and also nothing is missing. One last abnormality that has to do with the structure of chromosomes is a translocation. This is when two non-homologous chromatids or chromosomes exchange parts. Remember that crossing over is a process that happens in meiosis one and prophase one, and it should only be taking place between homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromatids are the ones that do this kind of an exchange. But if you have two non-homologous chromosomes swapping portions of the genes, then there will be serious consequences, like uh, there are certain kinds of cancers that are the result of uh, these uh, translocations. And so you can see here a classic translocation uh, which results in the Philadelphia chromosome. What is exactly the Philadelphia chromosome? Here we see uh, chromosome number nine, and uh, here we see chromosome number 22. Uh, and so chromosome number nine is a much larger chromosome compared to 22. And there are cases when these two non-homologous end up uh, exchanging portions of the chromatid. And it is an uneven kind of an exchange because chromosome number 22 gives a larger portion of uh, chromatid over to chromosome nine. Chromosome nine provides only a little tiny section uh, of its genetic material to 22. And as a consequence, we end up with this chromosome number 22 uh, that is missing a lot of its original information. Now it has a little bit of chromosome nine that shouldn't be here. And this Philadelphia chromosome is going to be responsible for a type of cancer known as chronic myelogenous leukemia. Uh, it, this is gonna be one of the victories of science in the sense that chronic myelogenous leukemia or CMR is one that has now a treatment that can help people completely uh, overcome this genetic disease and they can live normal 
in healthy lives. And so remember, what was the reason for this type of a, a cancer? It's because of this exchange that took place between chromosomes that should not have been doing any kind of an exchange. That is a translocation, and um, that is uh, what I wanted to uh, invite you to focus on and study in terms of chromosome abnormalities that deal with uh, errors that took place during the process of myosis.